Good morning, all. Welcome to the celebration of life for Kathy Wolfson. Uh, you did a great job with the weather here, all of you. Thank you very <laughs> much for that. It's fantastic. Don't know how it could be much better than this. Uh, a few housekeeping pieces for you first. Uh, the restrooms are right up here through the cloister on the right-hand side, okay? Uh, and you reach them from the outside and, and go in right here on the right. Uh, so uh, please feel free to, to use them. There is a water fountain beyond uh, the restrooms on the corner of the building. That is a no-touch uh, water fountain uh, with, that uh, just fills a, a bottle, no touch there. So if you need any water, uh, please uh, head on up there. Uh, looks like we're all masked and ready to go. We're going to ask you to keep your mask on the entire service. Uh, even those of you who are speaking, if you could keep them on for us, uh, that would be great. Uh, this is about the, the most difficult thing we're doing during these COVID times is burials, because of course the first thing we want to do is, is uh, be with the family and hug you and care for you. And so, but we ask you to not do that. Um, and when we get to the end of the service, I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Um, when we get to the peace in the service, if you could just stay in your seat areas and not wander around, okay, so we can keep our social distance, that would be great. We have a quartet singing for us today, and we ask the rest of you, as difficult as it is, to not sing, okay, so we just don't have all of those particles going in the air. Uh, we will just have the quartet doing that. But please respond uh, to all of, of the parts in the service uh, that are yours, which are in bold in the bulletin, okay? So, for example, when our deacon Chris says at the top of page three, may God be with you, you will respond. So with you. Nicely done. All right. Okay. Uh, so that'll be great. This is a communion service, Okay. Uh, and everyone in this church is invited to communion regardless of your faith tradition or where you are on your spiritual journey. Uh, communion is for everyone here, and that is a great way to honor Kathy, so we encourage you to take part in that. Uh, this is our aisle way, so we can have a nice procession up here with people being uh, distant all the way up. So uh, we will just have communion in one kind. I'll be standing right here. We'll have you come up one at a time. And that is also a no-touch communion. Uh, I'll be able to distribute uh, wafers to you without uh, touching them. Uh, drop them right into your hands, okay? So we welcome everyone to communion to take part in that. And again, that's a great way to, to honor Kathy. Um, we have a period uh, in the service for people uh, to, to make uh, remembrances or remarks about Kathy. We're going to do that right here, okay? So we ask you uh, to, to come up uh, one at a time and speak from here, and, uh, and we'll, we'll uh, disinfect between people speaking, okay? Uh, so that will happen up here. Uh, if you haven't signed our guest list in the back, if you could do that before you go, that would be a great thing for the family. And if you have any cards or other things for the family, if you can put them in the, in the boxes in the back there, that would be great. Uh, okay, I think we did it. Um, so uh, at the end of the service, we will, our, our uh, closing hymn is Give Thanks for Life. We will do that closing hymn in a blessing and a dismissal. And at that time, you're welcome to greet the family from a distance. Okay, and, uh, but that will conclude the service for everyone, and we ask you after that to, um, if, if, you can, uh, if you can move on uh, and back to your locations, that will be great. And then the family will have a, uh, a family interment of Kathy's cremains over in the memorial garden. We could not come up with any way to safely have all of you do that. So, so the family uh, is going to have uh, a private interment, okay? So that's the lay of the land. We are so grateful that you are here. The family is so grateful you are here. Welcome.
Listen to God's creation. The fire's voice is heard. Hear the voice of water. Hear the wind. It is our loved one's breath. Those who have died have never left. They are in the brightening shadow. Kathy will not be under the earth. She is in the rustling tree. She is in the flowing water. She is in the desert. She is here with you. Listen more often to the natural world. The fire's voice is heard. Hear the voice of water. Hear the wind. It is our loved one's breath. Kathy will not be under the earth. She is in the spirit of the dog. She is in the leap of the cat. She is in the grasses that weep. She is in the forest. She is in the desert. Beloved, we are gathered here today to celebrate the life of Kathy Wolfson, to remember our time with her, to give thanks to God for Kathy being in our lives and to pray for her family and friends as they deal with the pain of separation and loss. Let us pray today in a spirit of gratefulness for Kathy's life and with a sense of hope and healing for the future. Know that God is with you in your pain. May God be with you and, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember Kathy before you and thank you for giving her, uh, her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your compassion, console those who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of Christ so that we may live in confidence and hope until, by your call, we are gathered into the company of all your saints. By the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Most compassionate God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with Kathy's friends and family in our grief. Surround us with your love that we may not be overwhelmed by our loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A reading from Corinthians. Listen. I will tell you a mystery. We will not die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that was written will be fulfilled. Death has not been swallowed up in, vic in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always in excelling in the work of our God, because you know that in our God your labor is not in vain. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The psalm is 139. We will read this responsibly 
by a whole verse. You search me out and know me, O God. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O God, know it all together. You press upon me, upon me before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot grasp it. Where then can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you, the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. A reading from the prophet. For what is it to die but to stand naked in the wind and melt into the sun? And what is it to cease breathing, but to free the breath from its restless tides, that it may rise and expand and seek God unencumbered? Only when you drink from the river of silence shall you indeed sing. And when you have reached the mountaintop, then you shall begin to climb. And when the earth shall claim your limbs, then you shall truly bend.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Christ. Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The good news of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the God who is with us in our deepest grief. Amen. This is the part of the service where uh, we want to open the floor and let folks share their remembrances of Kathy. Uh, we ask you to keep those uh, remembrances to two minutes or less if you can. Uh, that would be great. And like I said, uh, let's just do that from here. And John Lincoln is going to start for us today. Good morning, and, and on behalf of the family, thank you all for coming out to this memorial service and the celebration of life. My dear older sister. Um, I also send greetings from my younger sister Barbara and my younger brother James, who uh, unfortunately were not able to be with us. So of course, as the younger brother, I have many, many stories of Kathy, but I can only share one with you. So. Um, it's, it's about the time when I was uh, five years old, almost six years old, and uh, Kathy decided that she wanted to become a barber. <laughs> so, um, being the only younger brother at the time, um, I was elected. And, um, you know, I, I sort of trusted my older sister, but whatever. So, she had gotten this idea because she had come with my father and me at the last time we'd gone to the barber, and she watched with rapt attention what went on. So she decided to duplicate that effort about three weeks later. So she found a stool, set it up in her bedroom, found an old towel, I mean a, an old uh, sheet, wrapped it around me just like the um, barber did, and commenced to work. Now, the problem, of course, is that she was not able to get a hold of a pair of uh, good sharp scissors because our mother, in her uh, ultimate wisdom, kept those locked up because she knew that we would not uh, follow her scriptures of don't uh, walk, don't run when you're carrying scissors. So the only thing that she was able to find were those uh, scissors that kids use when they're doing projects, you know, they're about that big, and they have the rounded ends so that you can't poke a kid, a kid, another kid in the eye. And of course, they are very dull. In fact, uh, I think these scissors were so dull they couldn't cut paper. But she started to work on me. Cut off a little bit here and a hunk of hair there. And some of it she cut off just a little bit too short so my, my scalp was showing. And all the time, she was humming a tune that was vaguely familiar to me, but I didn't recognize it at the time. And it was only later that I learned that it was something that my uh, our mother used to sing. Our mother was uh, um, into opera, and she would sing arias while she was doing her housework. And this happened to be a tune from the Barber of Seville. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, it was an Im improper tune because it, what sh she should have been singing was about the butcher of Barcelona. <laughs> so when I saw myself in the mirror, I burst into tears, of course, and went crying to our mother, look what my sister has done to me. 
And normally it wouldn't have bothered me too much because at five years old I wasn't terribly vain. But the following Monday I was to start first grade. And I said, I am not going to go to first grade looking like this. So our mother managed to find an old hat that was size small and she kind of cinched it up in the back. And so it was a bit loose that I wore that hat to first grade. And I didn't take that hat off. And after a couple of days, the teacher asked me um, why I wore this hat all the time, and I explained the story to her, and she said, come on, Johnny, it can't be that bad, let me see. So I took off the hat, and even at that age, I recognized that she was doing her best not to smile. <laughs> so she said, yes, you can wear the hat. So 24-7 for the next three weeks, I wore that hat to class, in the hallways, in the bathroom. I never took it off. Uh, until my hair grew out to the point where um, a, a professional could fix it. So I thought long and hard about how I could get retribution on my sister in a way that I wouldn't get caught. But I never could come up with anything sufficient, and so uh, as I got older I realized that everybody has bad hair days. And those of you that know my sister know that, especially as she got later on in life, she had many bad hair days. And so I realized that this was just divine retribution for what she'd done to me as a five-year-old. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, John. I love that story. Go ahead, Cynthia. I'm going to recall something extremely more recent. Uh, I noticed that uh, Karen McBain's here and uh, and uh, and uh, all the people we went out to dinner with after at the choir with are, are here. And uh, this last weekend we went to uh, Lowell Santana Canyon for our anniversary. And for the first time, I don't recommend this. We, for the first time, we ate out of a restaurant, my goodness, on the patio at the Flying V. And uh, it was the first time I had taken my mask off in public for about eight months, I think. And the first thing that we ate was, I think, uh, an appetizer of chips and guacamole. And I remember very distinctly, Kathy Wilson would always buy a bowl of guacamole and share it with us. And of course, that came rushing back to my head, my goodness. It's Kathy's spirit right here. And then for dinner I had uh, ribs, and it kind of instantly brought back those wonderful Christmas dinners that she would uh, uh, sponsor for us over at, uh, at Pastiche. And it's just, uh, it was our anniversary, but boy, Kathy Wilson was right there. Her spirit was right there. Thank you, Spencer. I've known Kathy for about 45 years. First in the opera chorus and then in the choir at St. Paul's back in the day um, on Speedway. And I just found a photograph recently of the very small choir at St. Paul's with Spencer and me and Kathy and a few other people. And it just feels like she's always been part of our lives. And it still hasn't quite set, sunk in that she's gone. You know, every time, every now and then I get this flash of, no, she's really gone. And it's very painful. Um, she sang in the choir faithfully for 40 years at least. And she was just a great friend, sort of an, a, a family member. She would come to all of our holiday meals and birthday celebrations. And she was generous as, you, as anybody can imagine. If you needed something, she wanted to help. Uh, she was, as we all know, strongly opinionated. She did not like to be wrong. 
and I know she drove some of the choir crazy with her <laughs> her perfect pitch. She she could be um, she liked to be the pitch giver, so uh, she'd make a joke about it using a different um, initial consonant and. <laughs> Um, she was profane, she was hilarious, um, her Christmas cards I've saved, you know, she always found a way to have fun with life, even though life was not always easy for her. After Dave left, and with her health declining in later years, she was in a, a lot of pain, but I've never seen anybody carry on the way she did. She just carried on until she literally couldn't walk anymore. And, you know, she's been a, a huge blessing to a lot of people. And I just want to lift her up, lift her spirit up, and lift up her memory. And let us all just, you know, love the universe the way she did. And I think that's a really great plan. Yay, Kathy. Thank you. Good morning. I'm not very good at public talking, public speeches, but um, I just want to say thank you for everybody that showed up. I am, I am a Jenny, and I am Aunt Kathy's niece, and um, I just uh, heard uh, the speaker prior to me talk about Aunt Kathy's perfect pitch, and that was something I always thought was really, really amazing about her and her gift to pick up languages and her gift to remember a color that she saw in the store and be able to match it with clothes at the house. When I was a little girl, I remember we went shopping and, and we were picking out some clothes and, and she was helping me get something that matched my purse back at home. And sure enough, she picked out the right color. And um, I feel her spirit a lot. And, and I just want to say thank you all for showing up. I uh, first met Kathy in 1985. I think we were singing in Masterworks Chorale, and she said there's this choir that's going to Europe, uh, and they're still looking for people, and would you like to join? So I tried out, and I happened to make it. And so we went uh, we went to Europa Cantat, sang there, which is where all the choirs from all over the world gather. We went on a week-long tour in Austria, and in that same choir was Spencer Hunter, Christina Jarvis, and also Dr. Tom Fleming, who is actually the, the earliest member of Arizona Repertory Singers, which is the choir that, uh, that went on that tour. And uh, the next year, uh, we went to uh, Vancouver for Expo 86. And in the choir at that time, uh, Jane Tucker had joined. And the next year, Jane and I married. And then we decided, uh, since she was a cradle of Episcopalian, uh, to join, and I was a Methodist, to join uh, St. Paul's on Speedway, uh, where Kathy and Dave were, and uh, Christina and the Spencer also, the Jordan, the director. Um, and then, of course, that became uh, joined with this church. So what it means is that if I had not met Kathy, I would not have married Jane, and I would probably not be here at Great St. Paul's. So I thank her for that. Thank 
she has said, we've known Kathy a long, long, long time. Kathy, to me, was Wolf's daughter. She was, she was part of our family. Every, every holiday, I particularly remember our trips up to Mount Lemmon on uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day. We always went up to picnic. And Kathy was always there. We'd go to the Iron Door. And she was just, so much a part of our lives and her her leaving has left a void that probably will never be filled. She'll always be there for me. And I love her and miss her. Bless you, Kathy. Through the 1990s, this church community underwent some really radical change. Um, it began with the merger in 1991, which is what brought Kathy into my life. She came with the St. Paul's group. I was here at Old Grace Church. During that period, we spent a lot of time discussing the future direction of the parish, and it made a lot of difference to where we ended up, where we are now. What I want to say about Kathy is that during that time she was reliably there as part of the discussions. She contributed to what we have become. I uh, met Kathy probably about 1985, right before when I moved here, and I was a part of some of the holiday traditions and so forth. But, and what I remember, and I know she was very determined, she had her opinion, but her generous spirit, because she would, I have a son who's now 30, since and I do, and one particular year, this is just a really, I don't know why I remember this, but she would buy presents for him when he was younger. And one time we went to Kimmel Park, which is just down the street here, and we had this birthday celebration. And he was about two years old, and there was this present she got, and I went, all right, we opened it. And it was this ambulance, this lovely ambulance that uh, said, one, rescue one eight. And so, Wes got it out, and he managed to hit the button, and it was working, okay? The batteries were included, and all of a sudden it said, rescue, what ain't going, rare, 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 rare. And it kept going and going and going. And then she looked at me with a sheepish look on her face and said, I didn't think it had batteries in it. <laughs> I will leave you with that.
heaven smells. And just for the record, I have two of Kathy's socks on. They last made her socks. Isn't that great, you guys? Um, I uh, met Kathy about nine years ago when I came to GSP choir, and um, I sat next to her. And so, although, Christina, you could hear what she was saying out loud about the pitch, I could hear what she was muttering <laughs> to herself. <laughs> and it was this constant, uh, not quite, no, little sharp, no, oh, well, that, I think the bridge has got that. <laughs> but we used to go out um, to dinner once a month together, and um, it was just really, she was a wonderful friend. But um, I was thinking about what stories I could share, and I thought, oh, I'll share the book. Oh, <laughs> I can't share that in the public now. How about this? I'll, Oh, no, no, that's a church environment. Can't do that either. <laughs> not supposed to say those words. So I, I have come up with one that I think is repeatable. Um, and it really typifies that just very natural generosity that is Kathy. Um, you know, it's, it's almost a second nature to her. And that is a few years ago, I was living in a little different place. I was living in an apartment with wall to wall carpeting. And one day, um, I had a nuclear disaster in the bathroom. And it, not a you know purpose, but the, everything overflowed and it was terrible. And it was getting closer to my carpeting, and I was just envisioning how horrible that would be in a minute. And so I reached into the closet where my uh, laundry was and grabbed my clothes and used it to prevent the progress of the brown wave, um, which meant I didn't have any clothes. <laughs> so I called Kathy, and um, I think maybe we were to go to dinner, and I was canceling, I'm not sure, but um, she said, oh, you know, I'll be right over. I'm like, what is she going to do? And just a few minutes later, Kathy arrived at my doorstep with 10 shirts that she had just picked right out of her closet and, and, and brought, and said, you know, I thought you maybe could use these, and of course, they were the blingiest shirts you could imagine, and you know they were they were beautiful and they were tacky. But the main thing was just that very natural generosity of, oh well, I can give some, I can share what I have, and um, I will always remember that generosity even more than your perky cake. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you for that, Jill. Thank you all for speaking. Um, I'm, gl I'm glad you both brought up the, the generosity because that's the, that, that's the Kathy that I knew, the person who would, who would come to me and, and be very opinionated about something we were doing theologically or liturgically and tell me exactly where she stood and then give me that devious smile and, and never said another word about it again. And, and then any time that this church needed anything, I, we didn't have to say anything at all, Kathy was there. And I will never forget that. And, and Chris, thanks for bringing that up. I, I'm not sure that I would have been called to this parish without that meeting that you guys had and the direction that this church went. So I will forever be grateful for, for what this church is and what it became, and Kathy was a major part of that. So, so thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
So that's one of the positives of being in the place that we are now. We get to hear Kathy sing at her own celebration of life. For our sister Kathy, let us pray to Jesus the Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. God, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Kathy and dry the tears of those who weep. God, God of love, be with us. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. God of love, be with us. You raised the dead to life. Give to our sister Kathy eternal life. God of love, be with us. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister Kathy to the joys of heaven. God of love, be with us. Our sister Kathy was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. God of love, be with us. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. God of love, be with us. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister Kathy. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Gracious God, we commend to you our sister Kathy, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and love with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other a socially distant sign of peace. In the path of righteousness, there is life. In walking its path, there is no death. Yes. 
composer of that song, Christopher Lindquist, is one of Kathy's favorite, favorite composers. So we wanted to do that piece, and the Sanctus we do today is also from him. God is with us. God is, God is present, present here. here. Rejoice, lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts to the Most High. Let us give thanks to the Holy One. It is right to offer thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the caretakers of creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, God, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his service he reconciled us. By his love, we are healed. Today we praise you for this world and all the creatures in it, as Kathy Wolfson taught us. Through the mystery of creation, Kathy and we have learned that life continually changes, but it does not end. When our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. And therefore we praise you joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
after supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this gift of thanksgiving. We remember his death and resurrection as we celebrate his presence with us and all of creation. God of our mothers and fathers, God of Sarah, Leah, Rebecca, and Chloe, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. We give thanks for the opportunity to come to this table for solace and for strength, for pardon and for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Christ, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is revealed in the breaking of the bread. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Beloved, this is the body of Christ for the body of Christ. Be what you see, receive what you are.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we, we thank you that in your great love you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant Kathy with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of humankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created us, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant Kathy with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Kathy. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Father and mother of all, we pray to you for those we love, but see no longer. Grant them your peace. Let light perpetual shine upon them, and in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. through. 
Beloved, life is short, and we do not have much time to care for those with whom we travel the way. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Remembering what Kathy taught you, let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.
O God, whose blessed Son was laid in a sepulchre in the garden, bless, we pray, this niche, and grant that she whose body is about to be interred here may dwell with Christ in paradise and may come to your heavenly kingdom through our Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. The Holy One who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Savior Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister Kathy, and we commit her body to its resting place. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. May our God bless her and keep her. May God's face shine upon her and be gracious to her lifting God's countenance upon her, and give her peace. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in God, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of your servant, Kathy Wilson, who, having finished her course in faith, now finds rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith, of your holy name have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father and Mother of mercies and giver of comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with all who mourn, that casting all their care on you, they may know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal grant to her, O God. And let life perpetually shine upon her. May her soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Be careful, everyone, as you go out into God's creation, for it does not belong to you. Be careful with one another and with yourself, for you are the dwelling place of the Most High. Be alert and be silent, for sometimes God is but a whisper. And may the blessing of that God be with all of you this day, creator, liberator, and king. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Remembering what Kathy taught us, let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You're welcome to hang out as long as you'd like in the garden. If you want to uh, say goodbye in any other way, feel free to do so.